Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast and a game 3 in a best of 3 matchup between MTW's Reen versus Happy. Game 3 taking place here on Metalopolis. We have Reen spawning as the yellow Protoss player over here at the bottom or what I'll call the 3 o'clock position. Meanwhile, we have Happy spawning here as the red Terran. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is a game three in a best of three series, so obviously both of these players have had experience playing each other, and I am looking forward to game threes as and generally more than game ones, you can see how players try to adapt and try to figure out that what the strategies are going to be. Not exactly sure. Um, Happy now building his supply depot away from the front door. Um, it looked like this uh, what one particular SCV was perhaps trying to build a supply depot in order to intercept an overlord for a moment. I'm like... Doesn't he know that Reen spawned as Protoss? Anyways, Reen continuing with that pro production, not doing any early rushes. And you have to remember that this is the ESL version of the map. I'm assuming that there is no possibility of a close spawn. As that seems to be the majority of the case where players don't want to see close spawns on this particular map. And we are also now getting a barracks coming into play. Gateway also warping in as well, and this game is finally underway. Both players should be pretty much sticking to that standard strategy. Reen um, in game one on Tall Dream Altar did open up with a very, very early Nexus, but that was only for Tall Dream Altar being the, the large map that it was, and also Happy not adjusting his uh, playstyle accordingly. Happy now making his way down with this SCV will quickly find Reen. It looks like, yes, Happy is going to quickly realize um, where exactly Reen is. And because of the close air spawning distances, we may see Void Rays, Phoenixes, or Warp Prisms, or Banshees, and other drops as well. So that is a definite possibility. Happy has tried to go for Banshees in, two of the, in, in the last two games. We'll see if he tries to deviate from that particular strategy or if he will just continue to do that as well. SCV deciding to steal some minerals at the same time. In addition to taking five minerals from his opponent, it also makes one of those probes try to wander and look for an additional location. As Reen now going into double assimilators once again. So um, because of the close spawning distances, Happy has to believe that there are going to be Phoenixes. Perhaps um, Phoenixes or Void Rays both are very, very viable options because of the close um, close spawning distances and how fast those units are. Two Marines now quickly making their way over to the ramp, forcing Reen's probe to pull back. <coughs> Excuse me, I seem to have caught something in my throat. But anyways, we have the Zealot now wandering around back and forth. And this SCV will just be wandering around continually, trying to get as much sight and information. And this is the critical portion for scouting a Terran player against Protoss. You need to see what that third building is. And you almost want to try to bait your opponent into building that building while your SCV is still inside there. As soon as you see the Chrono Boost on the Stalker though, uh, coming out of the gateway, or it could also be a Sentry, you need to get out of there as the range and the, the range and the speed on that Stalker is significant enough that that scouting SCV is going to quickly get destroyed. The Stalker now going to pass by in the middle of the night. SCV now trying to pull away. Looks like he has a little bit of a head start, but no, is not going to be able to maintain that at all as the Stalker is able to stutter step its way and get that final shot off. The Stalker now, however, going to try to walk around that corner, taking some damage there. And that's that's something I never quite understood. How could a Stalker who normally can't see up onto the high ground know that a bunker's there? Just just know that Marines are there, perhaps, or, or I don't know. Revealing that building there, and now Happy just sitting outside the bunker, waiting to get some damage onto that one particular probe. We do have a Scouting Factory now coming out, and the Scouting Factory does scout the Phoenix. So the Phoenixes are now coming out, and now we should be seeing some additional production buildings, perhaps an Engineering Bay or a Viking. The problem with Vikings is that in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, they actually lose two uh, Phoenixes. Uh, the reason being is that the is that the damage speed and uh, the damage speed on those units as well as the Phoenix now making its way around, going to get a quick sight and information, and now taking a look around. Three Marines not going to be able to catch up to that one Phoenix, a very fast-moving unit, and now getting some damage onto the factory instead. Back over here, we do have a pylon, and now warping into or upgrading into a warp gate. So yeah, with that additional Stargate and now two Phoenixes about, we should most likely be seeing an Engineering Bay and one or two Missile Turrets in order to fend off any early attacks. You can see the Phoenix is now coming in, quickly picking up an SCV, and now one Phoenix now taking a little bit of critical damage, being forced to pull back. You do also see that there are no SCVs in this refinery, so most likely he's changing it up to try to go into Mass Marines. 
And now those Phoenixes able to just wander around pretty effectively so far and get a lot of you know, just cause a lot of harassment. And while this is happening, you can see that the expansion is coming in, and this is a beautiful play by Reen. Just keeping economic or keeping pressure on his opponent while not really risking anything at all. Those Phoenixes just causing harassment and forcing the Marines to chase around and and perhaps causing slip-ups in micro. We are getting a medevac now. And once again, happy um, in every single game that I've seen so far. There, there has always been a... He's always been behind in terms of um, in terms of the food count. 52 compared to 35 there. And you can see there are a lot more production buildings. Three gateways and also a command center. But if you take a look here... You also see um, two gateways, a robotics facility, or yeah, two gateways, three gateways, and a robotics facility, and a Stargate as well. So I'm not quite sure how Reen has such a large food count difference, especially now that those bunkers are done. And now we should be getting more and more units into production as well as those Phoenixes now come back around perhaps to get a little bit more damage. And it looks like that missile turret going to be able to deter just enough right there. Deterring it. Oh, and a Phoenix goes down. So... The range on a missile turret just enough to cat put a little bit of pressure as now the Phoenix getting some damage onto that medevac and the medevac now being forced to pull away. Perhaps the auto track um, plus one range on a missile turret would be a, a smart investment at this stage as it will be able to deal more damage towards Colossi or to Colossi. Um, as it's able to get within range a little bit more quickly and also just a move away with those Phoenixes and the Observers. Now, if you did not know, I did turn on the flyer helper. It is that little dot that is beneath the unit. That is where the units have to actually target or be within range in order to try to shoot it down. The Marines and Marauders now on the move. There are two medevacs, um, what, six Marauders and eight Marines. But I do not think that's going to be enough to really stop this army of Zealots, especially with two sentries with enough force fields and guardian shields between them to make this harassment just look absolutely pitiful. Reen, more than more than knows what exactly is happening but these pylons are going to get cleaned up along the edge so one pylon already down if the phoenix is now trying to come in that is going to be a little bit of a, a mistake as well as the zealots most likely now coming in and now another pylon getting shut down as well so we are currently supply locked as the marauders and the marines are now trying to battle it out here getting some damage onto another pylon and wow supply locking his opponent for quite some time 83 over 76 a colossus now joining in on the fight as we are now going into a ghost academy so ghost academy going to be very very important in order to get some emp shockwaves and really essentially disable a front and front load all of that damage onto those units there a marine also looking to see if there's an expansion here um, the perfect time to take an expansion and now also a marine down here going to get graviton beamed it's just going to be able to sit there for a little while as the rest of the units are going to come over the marine Going to get dropped down, try to fight back, but yeah, going to get easily destroyed and burnt to a crisp. We do see another command center already being built here next to the expansion location. So 11 minutes in and we are already expanding once again as both players are trying to macro it up. Um, Income-wise, 38 SCVs versus 50 probes and now a Dark Shrine coming into play. So wow, uh, that I missed the Twilight Council, but the Dark Shrine now coming into play, meaning that we are going to be getting Zealot Leg Research in addition to Dark Templars. And Dark Templars are going to be a definite, definite issue, especially now that we only have a reactor on the Starport. The Starport is going to not be able to train up any any ravens whatsoever and with no ravens in that group and scanner sweeps being used um that's going to be very difficult for happy as happy is not saving energy on his command centers um i do not believe he knows about no he does not see any of the buildings here uh, he does know that something is being chrono boosted but that dark shrine being hidden off into the corner there and happy is going to have a very bad day Probes now making their way out. Level 1 weapons upgrade. Level 1 armor upgrades. And with that guardian shield, so much damage is going to be dealt. It, I don't know. I just always find it very difficult to look at a Protoss army. It's like, especially with the hit points on, you're like, what's what's in there? And anyways, yeah. So a very, very large ball of Protoss units. Zealots, Stalkers, and Colossi doing such a great job. Um, and it's because the Colossi can walk over his own, own friendly units, it allows essentially a large amount of DPS in a ground DPS in a very, very small range. Um, just very, very effective. We are getting some Vikings out now. So six Vikings already out. Dark Templars now being warped in up onto the high ground. 
And this is the bad, bad day that we were, I was mentioning just moments ago. Do we have enough energy for scanner sweeps? No and no. So this is going to be a very, very bad day indeed as the medevacs now trying to heal up more units. The reactor already taken down. And oh, an EMP shockwave missing the Dark Templar. So that so trying to use an EMP shockwave to try to reveal where his opponent is and doesn't see it. And now um, I don't think there's oh there is actually a ghost in there, but no energy on the ghost at all. Waiting for the scanner sweep. We need to get a tech lab over here in just a moment. Perhaps even a missile turret would help as well. As one scanner sweep should be able to come online in just a moment. Both <coughs> both buildings are just getting. And toasted there as we are now getting a missile turret. We need to get a tech lab here and that Dark Templar has done a decent amount of damage already. The Dark Templar just causing the pressure and now keeping Happy's army inside his own base. And now two scanner sweeps to kill two Dark Templars. But you can see the amount of map control that Reen was able to utilize during that time when he was putting that pressure and... He has this expansion now set up. There is also an expansion here as well. Happy currently supply locked as he did lose a couple supply depots along the outer edges. And now getting another reactor starport instead of, excuse me, instead of a tech lab. And now that means that we will still not have a Raven. Happy now going into mass racks production there as a Dark Templar is still in this group. The Dark Templar dealing 50 damage per attack. Getting so much damage, but as it gets revealed by that missile turret right there, um, gets taken down. So, yeah, that Dark Templar needs to be aware of where those missile turrets are, and he was able to kite it away. Um, Damage-wise and army size, 166 versus 133, as both sides are now training up more and more units. Level 2 armor upgrades, level 2 weapons upgrade, and size storm being researched, and I believe Reen is going to have more than enough to counter this army of happy unless those ghosts which are sporadically placed in here um, just are beautiful with those EMP shockwaves. Now, uh, happy definitely needs a raven at this point, but he is still... Con but the problem is if you get a raven, then that means you are no longer producing vikings. And then those colossi are just going to be able to roll over you. We are getting the level 2 weapons upgrade, and that is going to be completed, and we may are we are now just... Just a little bit of resources away from level 3. Reen running off of essentially 4 bases now as probes are being transferred. And his economy is just going to be absolutely horrific for Happy to try to overcome and try to counter. Um, although the resources in their armies are about the same size, Reen does have, is closer to his maximum food. And a lot of people have said this in the past. The Protoss army is best run at 200 food count just because of how quickly they're able to replenish those expensive units off of those gateways. EMP Shockwave quickly revealing a, a Zealot there. And now those units are moving back. We are getting a decent... The Vikings do have that level 1 weapons upgrade. But against the level 3 weapons upgrade and level 3 armor upgrades with High Templar, it may not really matter. Probes still wandering around back and forth. The Vikings now do see that there is a very large army here. High Templar is now making their way out. And Sizestorm now... No, no Sizestorm yet. EMP Shockwave. Stalker is now blinking. Oh! An EMP Shockwave. Just absolutely brilliant. On to all the High Templars. The High Templars need to start merging into Archons. At least they would be able to absorb all of that damage. And Happy... Just is ecstatic with that and now Sizestorm finally coming in on top of those units there as those stalkers are going to be able to finish off more of those units and even though we had some brilliant 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 EMP shockwaves um, Happy is definitely on the losing end of that battle back over here the medevacs now looking to do perhaps do a drop and shut down this particular nexus there is one photon cannon here though so this nexus may get shut down but now we are going to get stalkers here the planetary fortress does have a decent enough range and now the yeah the, the stalkers do not want to try to engage there as the marauders and marines are getting re or healed up and ready to move out once more Marauders quickly coming in, going to shut down one of those Nexuses. A Dark Templar now trying to warp in, unable to do so. So that Dark Templar has been destroyed as the units are continuing to make their way around. We are going to get some High Templars here. Stalkers are trying to come in, trying to reinforce the Nexus and going to get, be finished. And are the Stalkers going to be able to blink in and take down that last Medivac? No, not getting close enough at all.
and unable to do so. And the main army of Reen now coming back and retreating home. And the Stalkers are already lying in wait, ready to destroy this. With the Medevac now going to get destroyed there. The Marauders, oh, brilliant move by Reen. Reen purposely moving away with those Stalkers outside of the vents. So the Marauders were um, somewhat attacking the pylon only. And by only attacking the pylon, the, re uh, the Stalkers were able to get in a lot of, or get in a little bit of damage before it was taken down. We are now going to get another command center here. There, and Stalkers perhaps on, on a on straight move into death. Able to blink away finally. But a Zealot is going to at least delay this command center for just a moment there. As the armies are now being rebuilt by both sides. We see what 2400 resources totaled by Reen, and he already has near maximum food capacity once again another colossus and now going into the protoss shield upgrades as he already has three three upgrades on the weapons and armor stalkers now making their way over scvs joining in on the fight no Se oh sentry is now blinking away once again zealots now coming in and both sides already dealing a lot of damage to the colossi in the back though in comes some psy storm psy storm now doing some friendly fire damage as those marauders um, trying to um, pull through there and the zealots continuing to give chase stalkers closing in and there's the gg by happy so happy losing this best of three to reen here on metalopolis it always felt like happy was just um, constantly behind in food um reen doing a good job of just uh, just keeping up his food count, always having the superior numbers, even when Happy had superb micro in taking down multiple units. He was just unable to do anything else. Um, getting those uh, superb micro on those EMP shockwaves to shut down the High Templars, it, it still wasn't enough to swing it in favor of Hip. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between Happy and Reen here on Metalopolis.